Welcome back to Drone DJ. If you've got a new drone during Black Friday or looking to get a new one during the holiday season, we've got a few setup tips for you.、Uh, I've got my list, and I believe Kirk, you've got、uh, a few recommendations as well. Let's kick off with: if you've just received your new drone, unboxing. Is absolutely necessary.、Um, so my recommendation is obviously take all the、um, you know take all the parts out from the box. Make sure you've received everything. Number one, and then number two, the one thing I find is、uh, you know how new drones have all the different stickers. On the you know on the propellers, uh, sorry, and just under the propellers, and also under the gimbal. That's the one thing I notice people tend to forget. So under the gimbal, there's a little stopper,、uh, a black styrofoam. So make sure you remove that because if you don't, then、uh, the gimbal will overheat because it will try to、um, calibrate the gimbal while obviously it's locked. And just、yeah. look around, make sure you remove all the small pieces. Um, I I see that sometimes people tend to forget to remove you know the little plastic pieces around, and then once they've taken off, it starts to fly around. Yep, those those little yellow stickers that DJ uses those aren't uh those aren't for uh for visibility. Those are just for uh to keep the things nice and clean looking. So you gotta take those off. And、Wait. for you to know that this is a new drone. It is a new drone. Yes, and also make sure the little black plastic black plastic part on the uh. Almost. This is a real big、cover. one on the Mini Three, but、uh, on the、uh, on all the other drones, make sure you take that off before you、uh, do anything with the gimbal. Yeah, that's also common because、uh, if this is your first time and if it's a clear cover, right? Some of the drones have、uh, a clear cover,、um, mm-hmm. which people tend to forget, and again, it overheats the drone、uh, if this is holding the gimbal in place. Yep, that would be bad too. And before you get ready to go out to fly, make sure you charge all your power items. Obviously, that includes the actual battery、um, or the battery with the fly more kit. All the batteries. All the batteries, and also make sure you charge your controller as well. This usually comes in about fifty percent charged,、uh, so you definitely want to charge your controller before you fly too. What I find is before, especially with um Mini Three, DJ stopped、uh, including the actual power supply.、Mm-hmm. So make sure you have a proper power delivery. Ah,、uh, so at least、uh, I believe it's sixty sixty volt for the um ah、uh, for the actual power supply. And same thing applies to the cable. So if you're using a USB Type C cable, make sure it's also PD rated, power delivery rated. And you can usually see when you so Kirk, if you can hold up your Fly More Kit, the、um, charging hub. So if you plug that into charging, you will see that those lights is actually blinking at a different speed. So if they're blinking fast, that means it's fast charger. If they're bl- blinking slow, then it means it's slow charging, which could you know take <laughs> some time to say the least to finish charging all your batteries. Now, if you really want to make your setup efficient, what can you do while you're charging your drone? Is actually sign up for DJI account. If this is your first drone and you you haven't if you haven't had a chance to set up your DJI account yet,、um, while you're waiting for the batteries to charge is a good time. And I recommend either set like I recommend not setting up on your DJI RC controller.、Uh, it's better to actually set up either on your phone, just go to DJI website, or on the computer browser. Because I find when you are typing through here. And just the way the screen is designed, you know how you have to like do done,、yeah. or it, it always makes it a little challenging typing any、it's, special characters in here. It's fine for logging in, but、uh, any sort of like any other browsing, it's it's not necessarily the greatest. Yeah, so definitely recommend you know either creating on your phone or just go to the browser setting up your DJI account. <laughs> And、mm-hmm. after that, so one thing I notice is people tend to wait for、um, the batteries to fully charge before they turn everything on and start updating for more, right? So what I actually do is the first battery I have on the drone, I wait for it just to charge、uh, past you know around seventy five percent when it's three bars, because to update for more, it requires you to have battery more than fifty percent. Uh, but if you want to take your time updating firmware, not doing your first flight yet, then I don't want to just wait for all the batteries to charge 100. percent So、mm-hmm. take one out that 75. percent And same thing for the controller. If it's more than 75. percent, I start turning them on and、yeah. going through you know first settings. 
So if that's your new drone, right, usually you have to select your language, select your location, um, you know, go through the setup tutorial, and then all the firmware update, including your IMU calibration, um, and then before doing your first flight, even your compass calibration. So that's mm -hmm. all part of your firmware update. Uh, the one thing I recommend is on the controller, this works like a tablet. Right. So if you yep. just do the drop down from the top, that's where you can set up your Wi-Fi. Um, make sure as soon as you are able to, once you get through the first couple of screens of selecting your language, you know, log in, um, then just go set up your Wi-Fi. And that will allow you to update your firmware. And then after firmware is update, I mean, technically speaking, at that point, you're ready to go do your first flight. <laughs> But I have one more recommendation. I don't know if you label. Do you label your your drone parts, Kirk? I should. I label all my normal camera equipment, but I don't label my drone stuff for some reason. And I really need. I should need to start doing that as well. Even though I don't do a lot of flying with other other pilots, other than like once or twice, a couple every couple months. But that is a really smart thing to do: is making sure that you don't confuse your stuff with other people's stuff. Because I've already lost so many camera, like just camera batteries, to other photographers. Uh, then uh, so I could tell you that totally is possible with uh, with drones. That's a good note. Losing batteries uh, because mm -hmm. people tend to label their actual drone, and if you get the Mini Three, let's say with extended battery, that will put it over two hundred and fifty grams, which means you actually need to register it. So if that's the option you're going with, not only you need to print labels for your parts, you also need to print your registration. Here's the difference between the two. One says. Exactly. Less one says 249, one doesn't. Yep. Um, I also recommend labeling the actual batteries, right? So we label our drone and we put the registration number as well, but we also label our actual batteries. That way I'll know, is it number one, is it number two? Um, yep. And I tend to swap them, right? So seasonally, I would uh, do, my, do my drone maintenance. I would check each battery condition and then just look at how many times I've flown each battery. And if I've flown, let's say, number one too many times and number two you know, only a few times, I actually try to balance them out to make sure that I'm using them you know, consistently. Um, that's why I tend to label the batteries. And just like uh, Kirk said, if you go out to events or fly with other people, labeling all your parts, especially if you know Mini 3 is the common one, if everyone's flying similar yeah. drones, you definitely want to label your parts, including your actual controller. controller. So make yep. sure you label your controller as well. I, and simply like for, for what I do for my camera equipment is just I have pink gaff tape. No one else there has pink pink tape out there in the field. So I just put pink tape over everything. And I know that if it's pink, it's fine. So you, you don't have to go get fancy and get like a label maker or anything like that. Just like some tape works. Just yeah, fine. some tape works. I, I've seen people just simply putting tape on their even um, yep. their bag, right? Just putting pick a color, something that makes it distinguishable. Okay, so, so far we've covered, you know, unboxing your drone, check out the parts, charge your batteries, remove all the labels on the drone and the little gimbal covers on the drone, get your DJI account, update the firmware and print labels. Now, before you go out to do flight, especially if this is your first flight, um, my recommendation is take some time to go through all your fly app or go for app, whichever app your drone is using, go through the settings. Yep. So a few crucial one I recommend, you know, it's 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 absolute necessary. Let me see. Let me share my screen here. Okay. So first one obviously is your basic, you know, safety screen. That's where you can check your maximum altitude, maximum distance, return to home, and those are all the features you should check um, if you're doing your first flight. Mm -hmm. Your geofencing should be a little narrower, right? Than yep. just going out to fly 2,000 meters right away. And then you return to home, make sure that you check your actual location you're flying. Uh, and Kirk, I believe you had some recommendations on, on the actual flight location. Yeah, so if you're if this is your first time flying, I do this on every time I fly a new drone at all. I, I fly, I have a lot of new drones that I, I fly a lot. Um, I always take it out to a nice area that's wide open, not populated. Um, there's a park that's like, 15 minutes for me that's kind of a rundown park but it has a two massive soccer fields i get to fly around um, that no one uses so that's kind of what i choose for for my first location for all my new drones and then of course that's where i went when i first started flying drones um away from people away from a lot of trees and power lines and stuff like that away uh, from airports 
uh, much far away from airports. Um, yeah, try to stay away from that as much as possible. Uh, and then um, I kind of got creative and I went downtown where some there's a little pockets of outside of controlled airspace that you get to fly around um, and you get to some cool things there. Then I got more comfortable with that kind of stuff. Um, but, Basically, uh, take, start, it, take it easy. Take step. it easy. Yep, take, take it easy. easy. Take any steps. Uh, and don't fly when it's, you know, raining, stormy weather. <laughs> Pick a Super nice windy. weather day. Yeah, the, the place I go to had a, has a wind, has a, like a wind farm for something. If you could hear the things spinning real quick, uh, it might be a little too windy to fly. <laughs> so, But also don't wait too long. Right. Yep. DJI actually has a defect on arrival claim. Uh, I believe it's mm -hmm. within 10 days of you actually activating the drone. So don't wait too long because if, if you really got a defective product, then you won't be able to just exchange it. Then you have to send it back to California for repair. Uh, so if you don't have a place or a good weather day to fly, then at least just even, you know, go find a big um, open indoor space, at least just take off. Right. Or just outside of your door, at least take off and make sure the drone can fly and make sure all the parts are working. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Next one is actually you can go into the about section. A lot of people don't tend to do this, but I actually I tend to go into about section and change my drone name. So I would yep. actually name my drone here. And that's also a good place to check for your for more updates. Uh, the other thing is check the battery. So go into the battery screen. Right, I always say check the individual cell of the battery, make sure it's balanced. And if this is a new battery, you should also see how many times it's been charged, right? Everything should actually align with this being a new battery. Uh, that's also a good place to check. Okay. What else have you got, Kirk? Any final recommendation? Get creative with your flying. When you first start flying out there, you know, go around, do some... Get, get, get used to your, your left, rights, up, downs, forward, backwards, and then try to do some, like, you know, maybe do some S turns and or do some uh, figure eight. Some figure eight. Use, get used to the master shots or quick shots, whatever you do. do just, just for your first time out there, just kind of get some, get fun, make sure you're in an open space. And if you have no one around you, don't be, uh, be a little, be a little open to do some, some crazy stuff at first. Not, not too crazy, but, you know, after you get used to the, you know, your, your controls. Um, it's fun. It's super fun. Um, I've enjoyed doing it for, for since I've, I've joined Drone DJ, and uh, it, it's always a blast to try new things. And next month, we'll have some more recommendations on, you know, if you're just starting to fly drone. Uh, but just for today, mm -hmm. my recommendation is actually try to use two fingers when you're using the stick. And mm -hmm. you don't have to do it all the time, right? So if you're trying to get somewhere, then you can still use your thumb to push it. Um, but if you're trying to do any fine movements, Right. If you want to actually fly slow or find adjustments, try using two fingers because it okay. will give you more controlled movement rather than just, you know, thrusting up with uh, with your thumb. Yeah. And uh, I guess one thing it's fear. If you if you're nervous about it, even if you're nervous about the first flight, don't make the final decision to return your drone for at least a couple more flights because uh, you're going to be nervous the first time. And you're probably going to still be nervous the second time. Um but uh, once you get and to like the third or fourth you're time nervous, around, you make sure you know the drone yeah. has GPS. Just let go, let go of the joysticks, right? Yep. If you feel like it's going too fast or it's getting too close to things, let go, yep. and the drone will just hover. So I think one of the more time, nervous things that a first time flyer says is, is return the home. Like just just get used to practicing return the home on a field definitely. as well because that's that's a really nervous thing to do. Yep. Yeah, and get ready to cancel return the home. Yeah, make sure your fingers time. over the cancel button. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> whenever you do return because it doesn't always come back well you know 90 percent of the time it doesn't come back exactly to the spot so yeah. if you have a tight spot that's only let's say two three meters chances are it's not gonna land you know on that nice concrete right and may actually go off so get ready to cancel it and get ready to land um make sure you practice manual takeoff and manual landing don't always use the auto takeoff and auto land those are all the recommendations we've had for you today. If um, you know you just got your drone, make sure you enjoy it. Take it out for a flight, and uh, we'll see you back next time.